In this video, I'll demonstrate how to control Dynamixel AX smart servos with the Jetduino on a Jetson TK1. Dynamixel servos are networked using a half duplex transmission protocol. This means that you can connect them together to send and receive data. However, since it's half duplex, it's not possible to just hook this up to a normal serial line and talk to it. One of the cool things about using a smart servo is that unlike a standard servo, you can query it to get back a lot of useful information like its current position, velocity, load, and voltage. This gives you feedback on what the servo is actually doing as you command it to move. In this video, I'll power the servos from the power connector on the Jetduino shield. You'll need to make sure that the four jumpers for the Dynamixel power are connected as well to ensure that the current is supplied to the Dynamixel servos. Next, we need to plug in the servo to the shield. This is the Dynamixel AX12A servo. The connectors are polarized, so you can't plug them in the wrong way. So let's go ahead and put it into the connector slot on the shield. For this demo, I'm using a 12 volt, 1 amp power supply. This is sufficient for a couple of servos, but you'll need a bigger supply if you want more than a few. You can find an example Python script in the Jetduino software Python folder. Let's open up the Dynamixel Move script. This starts out very typically by importing the Jetduino and Jetduino pins. Then we set the ID we'll be using for our servo. Then next we have some configuration. So one of the first things we do is set the return level and it's setting it to one which in this case basically tells the servo to not send acknowledges back for things unless I'm actually querying for data. So if I ask for the position it will send data back otherwise it ignores sending the X and this just makes it go a little faster. Next, I set the clockwise and counterclockwise angle limits in case they've gotten reset somehow. And I make sure that it's not set to turn endlessly. Then the next thing we do is call dynamic cell move. And this takes the servo ID, the position that we want to target, and the speed we want it to move at. So right now, we're going to be moving to position zero. And zero is a kind of a default, means move at your quickest. And then from between one, one is the, then the slowest speed and 1023 is the fastest speed. Then we just sleep for a little bit and then we're going to move it to position 1023 at a slower speed. Then we're going to call stop, which basically it's going to stop at wherever it's currently at in its movement cycle. Then we're going to go into a while loop and we're going to alternate between moving to 1023 at speed 100 in position 10 at a speed of 1000. But then in between each of those we have a for loop here which we're calling get register which pulls back data from the servo and we're saying get the present position and so basically what this is going to do is read back whatever the current position of the servo is. This is not the value we commanded this is the actual value of where the servo is at that point in time. I'm planning on making some more helper functions here so that you should just be able to say read position or something. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. But you can get basically anything you want from the servo using get register. So we do that a few times, then we exit and we just call stop at the end. So let's go ahead and watch this script. Let's open up a terminal window. Go into our Python folder, then as the root user, we're going to run our script. And you can see that the servo is moving and that we're also getting feedback on the exact position as it's moving.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. So if you want to add more servos, you can add them to one of the other three connectors in the shield, or you can daisy chain them to each other. Let's go ahead and do that now by adding a second servo with an ID of 2. So as you can see on the servo, there's another slot for a, a connector to daisy chain them. So we're going to take our second servo and connect it up. Then we'll go back to our script and modify this slightly so that it can use a second servo. Save that out. Then let's go back to our terminal. And we'll rerun our script. And just like that, we're now controlling two servos. One thing to note here is if you need really fast feedback loops with your smart servers, you're not going to get it using this method since it's using a 100 kHz I2C line to control the servos on the Arduino. However, I plan to create another control interface later that uses the SPI lines and it will be capable of very fast feedback loops. One thing that can help with increasing the speed though is to batch up your movement commands and send them all together instead of one at a time. To do this, you can use the synchronous movement commands. Let's go ahead and open the dynamic cell sync move script. This is very similar to the last script. The only primary difference is here, instead of just calling a dynamic cell move, we're using the sync move. So basically you first call dynamic cell start sync move, and this tells it that we're going to batch up some commands. Then you do an add sync move with your first movement add sync move with your second movement and you can just keep adding these for however many you've got and it kind of buffers it up and then when you call execute sync move it sends them all at the same time as opposed to, to sending them one at a time with uh, pauses in between so then we do that once and we're just moving uh, a servo a to 1023 and servo b to 10 and then the second move we're, we're just swapping that around so, and then we, at the end, we just stop both the servos. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at this script. Let's run the script as the root user. Finally, one last thing I'd like to demonstrate is using smart servos for rolling robots. You can set a smart servo to rotate all the way around and set a speed so that you can control rolling robots with it. Let's go ahead and open the Dynamic Cell Endless Turn script to take a look at this. So the first thing we do is call Dynamic Cell Set Endless and we set it to 1 or true. Then within a loop, we're going to call 
turn speed and you can give it the servo ID, the direction, and the speed you want it to run at. So we're going to go clockwise fast for five seconds. Then we're going to go counterclockwise slower for, for five seconds. Do that in a loop and then we're going to turn endless off and recenter our servo. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. And just that easily, we're able to control the DynamicSell servos. Please note that you again have identical functionality that's available in the C library. After you open your JIT, we know you have the DynamicSell set registers, moves, stops, get register, and so on. So you have all this all the same functionality for the C interface as you do for the Python interface. I'm not going to demonstrate that here since it does the same thing, but I wanted to make sure you're aware of it. Please subscribe to my newsletter so you can be informed of new videos and when the Jetduino crowdfunding campaign goes live. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.